This is the Texas Instruments Speech Synthesizer from 1981. And it took talking computers out of the realm of science fiction and put them into the living room. I'm Matt D'Amico, and welcome to episode 36 of Retro Bits. Hey everyone, and welcome back. In today's bit, we'll be looking at the speech synthesizer for the TI-99-4A. I had originally intended to cover this way back in episode 6, but I got sidetracked while digging into the history of the system. I meant to get back to this sooner, but better late than never, right? In the beginning, the idea that a computer could communicate using human speech was purely in the realm of science fiction. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. But in some cases, the fiction was inspired by real-world electronic speech devices dating back as far as the 1950s. By the 80s, talking electronics were all the rage. There were talking toys. You are right. Speak and spell. Part of a family of products for richer tomorrows. Talking appliances. And even talking cars. No, not, not that kind. This kind. A door is a jar. So it should be no surprise that the tech would find its way to home computers as well. I can't believe this. A car that talks back to me. Linear predictive coding, or LPC, is a method of audio processing that traces its roots back to work done on signal detection in the 1940s. LPC allows for human speech to be represented by a small amount of digital data in a highly compressed form and is still widely in use today in things such as audio codecs and the GSM mobile standard. Texas Instruments were the first to produce a self-contained LPC integrated circuit. These speech chips were introduced to the market by way of the Speak and Spell in 1978. Variants were later used in other educational products, toys, cars, arcade games, including hits such as Star Wars, Gauntlet, and Paperboy, as well as in pinball tables, and they even allowed E.T. to phone home. In 1981, the TMS-5200 chip was released in an accessory for the 99-4A home computer. As we established in Episode 6, TI didn't succeed in the home computer market. But the 4A still got its fair share of add-ons, including the speech synthesizer, that hit the market at just around 110 US dollars, or 325 in today's currency. The device enabled developers to easily integrate speech capabilities into their software and was used in many games and educational titles, as we'll see shortly. By 1983, TI was facing intense pressure from competitors in the home computer market and had steeply discounted their systems to the point they were losing money with each sale. As an additional incentive, speech modules were given away for free with the purchase of a 4A computer, so quite a few of these devices eventually found their way into North American homes. As a result, they're inexpensive and easy to find today. The module is implemented as a sidecar expansion for the 4 and 4A, and has a limited built-in vocabulary that is stored in ROM. All told, there are just over 260 words in the dictionary, but TI implemented several methods to expand the device that we'll look at in a bit. To the best of my knowledge, the speech synthesizer was only sold in the 4A's original black and silver finish. Apparently, TI did produce some prototype housings for the later cost-reduced beige models, and some of these eventually found their way into the hands of collectors. Other folks have taken to 3D printing their own housings for a better color match. The TI is able to daisy chain multiple sidecar modules together, but the speech synth won't pass power through to the next device in the chain, so my Jedi Mat 32K RAM expansion won't work without an external supply. Let's open up the speech synth and take a look at what's inside, and also make a small power modification. The PCB features the TMS5220 LPC speech chip, along with two 16K byte vocabulary ROMs that are piggybacked on top of each other. The ROMs contain a binary tree list of dictionary words in plain ASCII, with a link to the address for the speech data of each.
The only thing we need to pass power to the next device is to connect pin 1 on the computer side to pin 1 on the edge connector. I'll just solder in a jumper wire and then verify continuity and also check for shorts with my multimeter afterwards. Now, plenty of other home computers in the early 80s had the ability to reproduce speech, such as the Commodore 64 demonstrated here. <laughs> but this method of speech used digitized audio, which required both software storage of the data and the full power of the CPU to bitbang the volume register of the SID for playback. Notice how the game completely freezes. Dedicated speech hardware solved both of these issues, and such devices were eventually available for just about every system on the market, but the TI was the first. Okay, I think that covers the background. Let's take a look at the device in action, starting with some games. Press fire to begin. shot, pilot. In total, just short of 30 games supported the speech synth, so what could be more fitting than starting with one of the most iconic 4A titles, Parsec? Alert. Alien craft advancing. Good shot. Good shot. Great shot, pilot. Alert. Alien craft advancing. Good shot. Caution. Asteroid belt. Cap down. Five. Four. Three. Two. Here we go again. Oh. Watch out. Ouch. Beware. Falling objects. Oh no. Look out. Now this game isn't particularly good on its own merit, but the addition of speech certainly improves things, especially the snarky comments you get every time you fall. Better like next time. Watch out. Oh. Beware, falling objects. You've got to move faster. Beware, falling objects. Did you mean to do that? Oh no, the cows busted out. This is another pretty mediocre game from TI, but if you use your imagination, you can almost hear a southern accent coming from the device. Yeehaw. This demonstrates the chip's flexibility, as LPC parameters for energy, pitch, and reflection can be adjusted for each frame of digitized samples. Uh oh, I'm a goner. Welcome to Korea. Over here. A 
Attention all personnel. Incoming wounded. Butterfingers. Nurse, sew him up. Thanks, Doc. Ouch. I give up. Patient is ready for microsurgery, Doctor. Robot probe entering the lung. As a child, I had no idea how to play this game. As it turns out, having some knowledge of anatomy helps. This poor patient, though, he seems to have every possible thing wrong with him and keeps developing new ailments as fast as you treat his existing ones. Mr. Burns, I'm afraid you are the sickest man in the United States. You have everything. Agent Dr. Levine. Robot probe entering the gallbladder. Virus, virus. Monitor damage ship. Crew member lost. Psychonauts approaching. Oh, 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 oh. Continue game, Captain. Advanced next level. Out of water, Captain. Crew member lost. Did we just render a crew member down for his precious moisture? I thought this game was for kids. Dave, find the bomb. Okay, boss. Pound the bomb, boss. Cut the bomb, boss. Quick, get it out. It moved the bomb, boss. Dave, find the bomb. Okay, boss. Oh no, what are we doing? Alien legions attacking. Prepare to die, Earthling. Early shot, my enemy. So, Speech added a novel new dimension to video games, but in retrospect, it might not have been the best use of the hardware. From the outset, TI intended their speech technology to be used for educational purposes, and that's perhaps where the device makes the most sense. Four. One. Four plus one. Four plus one equals five. Your turn. Five. The kitten cannot get down. Find the word down. That is right. Now, find the word cannot. That is right. This is a horse. This word is horse. The horse can help the kitten. Find the word horse. All told, there were nearly 90 educational titles released for the TI, with more than a dozen of them supporting the speech synthesizer. And in all. Two in each group. One. Two. Three. Four, five. Five groups.
35 divided by 6. Now, I'm not qualified to say whether the addition of speech to these learning aids made them more effective teaching tools or not, but I'm pretty sure that if I had one of these back when I was six, I would have used it all the time for no other reason than the sheer novelty of the thing. Equals five, remainder five. As I mentioned earlier, the speech synthesizer has a fixed dictionary stored in ROM. TI had originally planned for the ability to expand the device with additional vocabulary and languages by way of an external ROM module that could be inserted into the trapdoor, much like the Speak and Spell. This feature was dropped in favor of another solution, and as you can see, there's nothing inside the lid or on the PCB to connect an external ROM to. Instead, TI developed more advanced text-to-speech software that could pronounce arbitrary words in English by breaking them down into their constituent sounds, known as allophones. The Terminal Emulator 2 cartridge shown here implements this enhancement. The cart's GROM contains speech data for all of the English allophones, along with text-to-speech software and an enhanced BASIC that enables the use of these new features. TI also implemented these capabilities on the speech editor cartridge and the text-to-speech disk. On the TI, lowercase is just a smaller version of uppercase, and it wasn't clear to me which I was looking at in the manual. Pro tip, make sure you have the caps lock key on when you enter these commands or you'll get an IO error. Guess how long it took me to figure that one out. I can say any word you can throw at me. This is a test sentence. In addition, several options were provided to adjust the pitch and slope of the synthesized voice, as demonstrated here. This is a test sentence. This is a test sentence. Further, the software provides the ability to add primary and secondary stress points to a sentence, as well as change the inflection point of a word. This is a test sentence. This is a test sentence with inflection. So, before we wrap up, let's touch on ti 99 speech emulation, starting with the Mr. FPGA. The 4A chord does support speech synthesis, and it works quite well. In fact, I captured most of the content for this episode from the Mr. because the audio capture from the real hardware was very noisy. Hello there. This is the TI-99. What I found is software that uses the built-in dictionary all seems to work fine, but allophone-based speech doesn't function properly at all. It was the same story on the PC, where I tested both Classic 99 and MESS. Everything worked fine except for the Terminal Emulator 2 allophone speech. When I dug into it a little further, it was revealed that the Mr. Core bases its speech routines on the MAME source code, so it's not truly emulating the speech synth hardware in the FPGA. So there we have it, the speech synthesizer for the TI-99 4A. I never had one back in the day, so it's hard for me to judge whether it was just a novelty or had real value as an educational tool. Either way, I'm sure the six-year-old me would have loved it. Make learning fun. The home computer from Texas Instruments. It can give your child a head start in school that could last a lifetime. All right, that's it for today. I hope you learned something new. I certainly did. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time on Retro Bits.